Spoiler alert, the following podcast includes discussions on film that may potentially, intentionally or inadvertently, reveal plot twists, character traits, story details, up to and including endings, that might otherwise be considered spoilers. Proceed at your own risk. You're listening to Movie Sucktastic. My heroin and my hypodermic needle, bitch. We are live. Live. We are live. It's live. <laughs> oh. Oh. How hello, are you? Joey. Hey. Now, see if you say hello, Scott, then the listeners know who we are. Hello, we- Scott. There you go. See, that's how that works. Oh, is that how that works? It's been a week. That's how. It's been a fucking week. We didn't coordinate that, but it's been a, been a fucking month. I tell you what. <sighs> Uh, well, what what we're here to lighten the tone a little bit with a little movie sucktastic fun. That's right. I hope and, uh, and, I hope everyone's joining us live. It's free, and, you know. And and if not, the 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 other version is free too. So yeah, it's all yeah, free. Not, My God, the amount of money we spend. Huh. you could at right. least listen to it. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> um. And this episode, we are going to be reviewing. Uh, we're, uh, we'd spent the last month doing listener requests, That's and right. uh, now we're back on track with our uh, mutual challenges. And this week, uh, we are re- reviewing, thanks to the challenge from Joey, uh, Soul Man. Yes, and uh, the way this challenge worked is Scott challenged me to God's Not Dead, and my ah. challenge, my challenge connection was a college student having trouble in class and with his teacher and just in general. So mm-hmm. I immediately thought of Soul Man because, of course, C. Thomas Howell, Mark Watney is a rich white boy from L.A. Who's Watson. Watson, that's correct. Marcus Washington. That's right. <laughs> Leon. <laughs> Uh, he uh, he's a rich white boy from LA whose father uh, uh, suddenly has an epiphany from his therapist saying he's not going to pay for his school he's going to make him pay his own way and he just got accepted to Harvard Law School he just got accepted to Harvard Law School and let me tell you something the jump that this country has made as far as how it's fucking it's it's students in the ass as far as tuition 10,000 in tuition a year for Harvard Law in 1986. Mind you, that uh, is that is 30 years ago, but now tuition with, for Harvard now as compared to then, you're talking like it's I I have I have the numbers. You want oh, you want to hear the numbers? Yeah, I would love to hear the numbers. Now, now j- j- just as a brief this is a brief foray into Strangers in a Strange Land which is coming back very very shortly. Um <laughs> kind of. Uh, yeah, so what happens is his father says, I'm not going to pay. So there's a scene where he's standing in front of a noose, and he's lamenting at the expensive costs of going to Harvard Law. Right. And the price he quotes, he says, the total cost of tuition, including living expenses, for three years to go to Harvard Law School, he quotes it as $53,979. Right. Breaks down to, to roughly like... Seventeen thousand, and, and even if semester. even if they came up with the numbers in nineteen eighty five when the film was probably written and filmed, 
it ain't going to change that much within a year. So I, right. would, I would say that those numbers are probably close to accurate. Yeah, they probably did a little research for bringing that up, and they probably tried to make it sound as high as possible, yeah. considering he's supposed to be t- complaining about having to get the <laughs> it money could even, You're right. It could even be a, a, could be, have been less. <laughs> right. Now, if you adjust that amount for income, I mean mm. for inflation, yeah. the uh, mm. adjusted inflation on that amount of money would equal in 2016 uh-huh. or 2015 as $116,810. So okay. – like double the price. Okay, got it. Okay, now, so so if, if they shot that film today, uh, and you adjusted for inflation naturally, that's what what it should equal one hundred sixteen thousand. Got it. If you go to if you go to Harvard Law uh, website or where and just get their basic tuition cost, the current cost of three years of tuition, two hundred and sixty six thousand six hundred and forty dollars. What? Which means adjusting for inflation means it's that, cock. Is incre- that is an increase <laughs> of 228% in the past 30 years of tuition costs. It's no wonder kids are still living with their parents. It's no wonder kids are going back home after they've moved out. It's no wonder people are paying their school loans pretty much. As a matter of fact, it's no wonder that this generation will realistically be paying their school loan well into their retirement. I know I will. <laughs> uh, and, and I ha- I got to be honest, I feel very fortunate that I was able to put myself through school mm-hmm. and have been able to pay it off. And, mm-hmm. and a large part of that is because I was able to live at home while I did it. it you know, it's it just not everyone See- has that luxury. But more people, more people are starting to do that because that's the only way to do it. And you know what? That's yeah. that's sad because and, and you know we shouldn't I, have to do that. Uh, two people yeah. should not have to work uh, for for two incomes to survive. Are you this, a communist? It, no, I'm just saying that if someone and, it was going to stay home and raise the kids, I'm not even saying it had to be a woman. I'm saying it, it could be the, the, the another the, guy. It could be sure. Could be anybody. It could be anybody. Um, but all I'm saying is, back in the olden days, not to, to sound dated, even though the olden days right. isn't, doesn't apply to me, like, my father worked, my mother didn't, you know? And mm-hmm. when we were old enough, my mother, she decided, oh, I'm going to work. But she didn't have to, because my well, father little- made... I'm just saying, I, I'm just going, I know I'm going a little bit further than needed, but, and I know this is movie sectastic, not Strangers in a Strange Land, but all I'm saying is it really shows how bad things have gotten with things like income and tuition and sure. things of that nature. I, I, I myself am just grateful that I was able to accrue my, my, uh, my student, uh, my student debt during, uh, the lowest financial history point since the Great Depression. You were able that to get a wise, lot of financial wise aid. Wise choice on my right? part. I'm glad but, I did that. But you were able to get a lot of financial aid? Uh, yeah, thank you, Obama. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. That's right. That's right. First, my, yeah, my first, my first, uh, <clears throat> two years of college basically paid for by Obama. Thank you. <sighs> Couldn't have done it without him. Anyway, so, yeah, so, and so, see, Thomas Howell you, is, you, is, would, is, you really is, wouldn't have done it without him. Uh, seriously. <laughs> if you no, had a Republican I, president, oh, boy. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's not, uh, Let the, uh, uh, it's, Trump. It's let's wrong, move on. It's wrong podcast, I know. Uh, so, yeah, so see, Thomas Howell has to figure out how to afford college because he doesn't want to miss this grand opportunity to go to Harvard Law School. That's right. Uh, so he uh, he goes black. Right on. Right. He has a, <laughs> he has a friend that works in, in, a, uh, in a research and development lab for a company that, that specializes in tanning solutions. That's and he right. gets tanning pills and overdoses on them, hence Black C. Thomas Howell. That's right. And then he gets to, to get a full scholarship towards Harvard. What? Nothing. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. You know you want to play one of them. Do it. I, I just did, and you talked over it. You ruined oh, it. Oh, we'll do it again. Do it again. But see, the timing is what needs to be. Well, the timing is you wait till I stop talking. Yeah, but I thought you were you were going to stop talking. Well, you say something black. <laughs> something black. Sure. Now that doesn't work for me. Okay. 
Like so, C. Thomas Howell goes black. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new soundboard, and and Joey, Joey, uh, yeah, didn't make didn't make it ten minutes into the show when he said, "Oh, I'm not using it. I'm not using the soundboard for the show." So you, you know you're going to. So no, he didn't make it ten minutes. So I, there you well, go. <laughs> you can't touch this. No, no good. <laughs> okay, I'll keep it at a minimum. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get you some sounds for the sound. Give me some sounds. Uh, I'm gonna save a lot of these that are my favorite. I'm not gonna use a lot of them, but you know, yeah. I, I, I really I want to color coordinate them. All kinds of fun stuff. I, I I think it's I think it is a welcome addition to the show. I just want to steer away from stuff that you would hear on any morning shock jock show. Of course. That so I think more movie and and television related quotes. I'll send a couple your way. No, I I, I have like a dozen ringtones notification things I can auto, I can send you now that you would definitely use during the show. As long as I have them before next week. Uh, so this film was semi controversial when it came out. Uh, stars yeah, it, such it, as it uh, Spike dis- Lee. Kind of disappeared off the face of the earth when it came out. Yeah, well, well, apparently uh, stars like Spike Lee and um, Richard Pryor, not Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor actually said he liked the movie. Um, Eddie Murphy came out against it saying it was um, racist Racist. to have a a a white person doing blackface in a film. Well, not that I want to agree with them, but the fact, nobody's bought, I mean, I wasn't buying it. He just looks like, he, all right, he, there are scenes in the film where they didn't lay on the the blackface as heavy as other scenes in the movie. Uh huh. He looked much whiter <laughs> in other right. scenes. I mean, I always make the mistake of checking some of the average viewer feedback by going into IMDb message uh, boards. Always a bad sign. Yeah. Uh, and oh, and reading some of the reviews. As far as reviews goes, the 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 common thread of anybody that had anything negative to say about the film, their main complaint was. C. Thomas Howell doesn't look black. And since it's a comedy... Well, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, well, I think that what they're saying is that he doesn't have the negroid features of the... I'm just merely the, talking about how bad the makeup was. <laughs> the, <laughs> right. the negroid. But, you know, <laughs> I got it from a well, negro. Like, See, that's a sound file have... I need that I could have used right now from Caddyshack. I got it from a negro. <laughs> <laughs> but he... um. A lot of these people would complain. Well, he didn't look black, and it wasn't. I wasn't realistic. I got I, black well, friends. Nothing... He didn't look like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, it's a comedy, and I I don't know how far do you want to go on the he wouldn't have fooled me if I saw him bandwagon because it's just the concept that's supposed to be funny, right? So, and if they had actually done prosthetics on him to make him black, that might have been worse. <laughs> I might have been a lot worse. I mean, this film is a perfect example of uh, of the phrase that goes around quite a bit is suspension of disbelief, because yeah. that you really have to have that to watch this. There's no way anyone thought that the afro was real. There's you no way anyone that thought it. that the makeup was real. Uh, just none of it looked right. But if you just take the concept. Suspension of disbelief, and you put that kind of on the side, you can enjoy the film. I I forgot how well that this was directed, and dare I say, acted specifically by James Earl Jones. It was a funny. Sh- it's a funny movie. Yeah, it is. And also, I, I saw some people that would criticize. Yeah, but and some of the some of the comedic setups were very basic. It's a basic comedy. What it was shot yeah. for three million dollars. Well, what the fuck do you yeah, want? And. And not for anything, but they were the in, the entire the the two guys that kept talking uh, or kept making black jokes through the whole film. You knew they were going somewhere with that. You knew, oh yeah, he was yeah. going to do something at some point. It's it's a basic brick joke. Yeah, you know it's going to come back at the end, right? So you know, I'll give him that. That was a basic, you know, way to get a joke in there. Well, the, or there's something one guy in there. but I didn't mind oh, it. Whole, it was fine. The whole scene where he's trying to hide his face from his parents that was expected. This is, okay, yes, it was. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you just take the concept: white person that pretends to be black, hilarity ensues. It's all expected. It's right. expected humor. That's what that's what comedies are based on: expected humor. That's right. 
You go into a comedy expecting a certain kind of humor. Otherwise, you wouldn't. I, I, I recently watched that um, that last Sasha Cohen film, the the Brisby Brothers or the Brothers. No, the, the Brothers, Brothers Grimsby. Grimsby. I haven't Grimsby. seen it yet. Okay, uh, I expected like over the top, uh, gross, anatomical humor. I got it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> Turn Cortana off. What? I, it's it's fine. <laughs> Fuck you, Cortana. I'm talking. You keep you keep aggravating her. I don't know. It's it's the sound of your voice. Yeah, I, I get that a lot. <laughs> uh, now, speaking of like going back and watching this film, very controversial film at the time because blackface, whatever. Watching it now, I'm sorry, I find nothing wrong with this film. Yeah. On a on a on a like uh, a a uh, sensitivity level. Yeah, it's pretty tame. It, not even tame. The whole film. Huh. There's the father from Elf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a there's actually uh, like two or three instances of oh, there's that person. Oh, there's that person. Like, did you notice Ronald Reagan's son? Oh, Ron Reagan. Yeah, I saw him. <laughs> oh, and Liam Neeson. Uh, not Liam Neeson. Leslie Nielsen making Leslie a, Nielsen, uh, guest appearance. Ronald As Reagan's a, son. The, Leslie the father Nielsen from making Elf. a non comedic appearance. By the way. Yeah. Like. You're watching the credits, Leslie Nielsen. Oh, this should be good. It's like he's, Although, like he's a straight guy. The my favorite time. scene in the whole film is the dinner scene at his house. Uh, well, that, that's an easy one, yeah. But, I, dude, when, when everyone has their own kind of like little flash of him as a black person, and mm -hmm. his is the best one. His is <laughs> the best one because he, C. Thomas Howell is dressed like a pimp, eating watermelon, and then telling his bitch to go get his heroin and hypodermic needle. <laughs> yeah. go, go get what your. What you looking at? What the fuck you looking at? Go get your fat ass and get my high, my heroin hypodermic needle. Get me more watermelon. <laughs> the best scene in the movie. I know it's yeah. simple. I know it's easy to pick it. Well, yeah. Still the best scene in the film. It, when he's got sweat humor. all over him, what? and he's got a piece of bamboo in his mouth, and he's got sweat oh, yeah. all over him. And he's like, I never had a white woman, but I'm gonna have one now. And she's like, Ooh, the the, he the bamboo mother. In his, he, bamboo. He had a, he had a knife in his. Was mouth. it a knife? Teeth. Okay. Knife between his teeth. Yeah. The son thinks he's prince. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, again, all the humor in this film was directed towards how stupid racism is, and how bad it is, and how hard it is for a black person to live in a racist America. Right. And, and I even love, love the opening where, where uh, they're, they're first driving in. He's like, oh, you're going to have a great time. This is a great time for black people. It's the Cosby era. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. And, uh, and that, that is such a white perspective. Me, well, I, I love that line coming from in the 80s. And then when you watch Hot Tub Time Machine, there's that one line where he says, this is a great time for black people. Well, I mean, our time, not now, the 80s. This is a horrible time for black people. I don't see a black person in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's like the hindsight is twenty twenty on that. Yeah. It really <laughs> is. It's just like, yeah, you know, when we wrote that, yeah, man, yeah. Uh, but, no. <laughs> but I mean, I, I went into this not remembering much of the film. Just remember, you know, it, it, vague memories watching it. And you know, again, like you said, it disappeared. So no one's ever really. It, it's not like it played on cable over and over again. It came out. It kind of went away. It, was kinda it like... made it made fifty million at the box office for a three million dollar investment. It was a it was a hit. I'm surprised. I actually didn't check the numbers on what it made, uh, uh -huh. but that is a lot of money. Yeah. And, and as, as a matter of fact, I, I didn't even check to see if the director ever worked again because this was so controversial back then. It seems like he probably did. Well, oh I mean, okay, he's controversial, done. He's, but, but he's not still to working, extent too, which is good. What? He's I'm still, sorry, I talked the, the, over you or you talked over me? I can't tell which. I don't know. <laughs> the director is still working, Steve Miner. So see Thomas Howell. Yeah, kind of. I mean, kind of. <laughs> He's kind of working. He kind of working. Oh, wow. Steve Miner directed Lake Placid. It's pretty there cool. There you go. I like that. Well, it, it was interesting. I, I looked up a couple. I, I tried to look up interviews from the actors and, and uh, directors and such uh, when we do certain films, controversial films especially. And I found it was interesting. I, I found a couple interviews with C. Thomas Howell. Uh, based mainly on him work up in the Southland TV show mm -hmm. and getting a lot of uh, positive acclaim for that. So interviewers would go back and bring up other films. And a couple of them brought up Soul Man. And one thing I found is where he uh, he found it interesting that people kept saying that that was the film that ruined his career or tanked his career because he said 
he said that's not the case. The film did well. It's the film that he made after this uh, that tanked his career. Which one was that? Was that the beach uh, one? He uh, no, no, that was a bit later. Um, let me find. It. I had it highlighted here, but he worked on a film that was supposed to be six months, and it took a um, it took a full year to make. Oh my and then God. it and then it was never released. Uh, really? Yeah. The role that killed my career was a movie I did with Elizabeth Taylor, directed by Franco Zeffirelli, called Young Tuscanini. It was supposed to be a six-month dream, but it turned into a 12-month nightmare and ended up going into litigation and never came out. When I accepted that role, we thought it would be Oscar-bound on many levels. And then once you do a movie for $20 million and it's unable to hit the screens, then people start to talk you up as that. So and he says he says because people say Soul Man told me to take my career. Soul Man made fifty million dollars. It was a hit. It saved New World Pictures. New World Pictures was facing financial troubles. That film profited. They needed that money. It was a success on every level. Wow. Yeah. It was. That, uh, he played Arturo in that. It came out nineteen mm-hmm. or did it ever get released? Is it out now? Could I see it now? I, I don't know. I didn't look at that part up. Young Toscani. He said Toscanini. 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 He's, he, in this interview, he said it never came out. This interview is uh, back a, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, um, when he was doing Southland. A fanciful biopic of legendary conductor Arturo Toscanini as a very young man. See Thomas Howell, Elizabeth Taylor, uh, Elizabeth Taylor Sophie Ward, John Rhys Davies, Franco Nero is in it. Oh my God. <laughs> I got to see so if I, thought- I can get a hold of this. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting that he brought that up. It's like, yeah, no, that didn't. Everybody thinks it is because it was controversial, and then, and then all of a sudden he's not doing films. It's like, well, yeah, but that's not why. Uh, and just before this, the fil- and he even uh, he took this film after completing The Hitcher. Oh God, that's right. He did The Hitcher the same year. And I thought it was interesting because he said, "I just come off a very dark film, The Hitcher, and I and th- to do something light and comedic was a great relief, and this was a great script, so I took it." So and you know what's what interesting? Did. You know what brings that full circle? Because I just looked up the uh, Steve Miner's, you know, like his career. His first uh-huh. two movies were Friday the Thirteenth Part Two and Three, and then he does Soul Man. Oh, there you go. So I think they both needed a break. Yeah, <laughs> especially so. from the Dream Warriors. Yeah, yeah. That was three, right? That was three, right? That's the Dream Warriors? No. Friday the 13th. Nope. You're thinking of Friday Nightmare the 13th. Elm Street. I th- I, never mind. I, I got my franchises mixed up. Sorry. That's 3D. That's Jason in 3D. Uh, yeah. That's that's probably that's probably the first. I, Friday the 13th hit two bottoms. The first was Friday the 13th in 3D. And then the second was Friday the 13th, uh, Jason Takes Manhattan 7. Right. That was that's seven eight. So I'm actually looking at C. Thomas Howell's career after Young Toscanini, and yeah, holy shit! Uh, Return of the Musketeers, Nightmare Classics uh, it was a TV thing. There was that beach movie called Side Out. Curiosity Kills, another TV movie. He did something called Kid, Deadly Nightmare, and it just goes on and on. Then he did a film called Breaking the Rules, with uh, starring him, Jason Bateman. And Jonathan Silverman, which I actually just got my hands on a copy because it's only ever been released on Laserdisc. And it's yeah, a, I, I got a copy of that myself. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So I was like, when, whenever I see anything like that where it says Laserdisc, and I'm like, oh uh-huh. shit, that means it, it's unattainable. Like right. I've been trying to get my hands on a copy of My Demon Lover forever. Oh, tell me about it. And I can't. I, I, and apparently there was a copy of it rolling around the internet at some point, but it is even on torrent. It is nowhere to be found. No, Holly still has my DVD, my rips. She might have that. I have to double if check. If you have box. that, I need it. I, I, I will. I will see if I have that some, hidden somewhere. Um, now, also speaking of um, going from like uh, Soul Man connected to bad uh, to films that ruined careers, right? Like um, like Tuscanini. Uh-huh. Uh, I also read that. Um, uh, Tim Robbins was originally up for the role in Soul Man, but, <laughs> but he uh, he ended up not taking it because Howard the Duck went over went over in production. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, there, there's a movie that cost fifty million, <laughs> and and just fucking bought like that was it, George Lucas's baby. You know, and normally I I hate trivia that involves oh this movie was uh, uh the, you know uh, 
uh, you know, Robert, Robin Williams was considered for the role. They consider like 30 fucking stars for I know. every role. I think one of the best just... ones is Tom Selleck is uh, Indiana Jones. He actually had the part but turned it down. Well, but, you know, they say, but but the thing is, like, they, they don't just go to one star and say, hey, will you do this? They usually go to, like, 50 stars, you know, 20, sure. the top A-list. They go to all of them. So you can name any big film and, oh, yeah, here's 10 people that didn't What they the literally yeah. do is they think of this person is right, this person is right, and all the way down the list. And then well, if, the they get, and right. if they get so, one of them, then they've picked a person that they've envisioned in the part. It's not like they're saying... You know, we want George Clooney for this, and it's the wrong part for him. No, they're thinking he could actually pull right. it off. And again, that doesn't happen for every film, but no. a, a vast majority of these big films where the studios are making the calls, the studio's in on it, too. So, well, you know, we need an A name, we need this. You know, look at all the films where they, they try to get somebody in the, in the film and say, no, 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 we need a big name. And so they end up losing, I mean, look at uh, Dogma by Kevin Smith. One, this, this is one of the few times I, I, I won't be speaking negatively of Kevin Smith on the show. <laughs> His uh, Gene Garofalo was really the part, the, the you know, the person to play the lead character. And they're like, no, no, we need a name. And so they bumped what's her face into the fucking dogma, who's the weakest link of that whole fucking film. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, I, I don't know. I don't remember her fucking name. All I remember is that she's like the worst part of that movie because she she. Yeah, I heard she was very difficult to work with. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kevin Smith said that, so go figure. But uh, he's, no, no, he's I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on going. his side with all of that. <laughs> yeah. It, it definitely. I, I remember reading that script like years before it came out. I'm surprised it even got made. So Linda Fiorentino. Yeah, horrible in that film. Horrible. Yeah. Totally not fit for that at all. It was just to put a name in the fucking seat. But that's what happened. So yeah, a lot of people get turned down for roles, or they turn down roles. It happens all the time. So I normally don't. I normally ignore that kind of trivia. But when I saw Tim Robbins had to stand, how do Howard the Duck, so he couldn't do it. It's like, oh, that's special. Oh my God, she's almost sixty. Good. How is? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> how is she almost sixty? See, I'm looking for young Toscanini, and I'm wondering if I should be looking it up by the Italian name instead. Because I'm uh, not, I'm not getting anything anywhere. Well, it was an American film, wasn't it? It was filmed in Italy, and it has an Italian name, so it might only be available. Um. That way, so doing a search well, again, for young Toscanini. In his interview, he might... said it was never released. <sighs> yeah, because it was because it was tied up in litigation, so it's possible that that litigation held. It says, uh, well, you know what's interesting? It probably still is unreleased because on IMDb, I it's like a hundred and something people rated it. <laughs> oh, wait, are we talking about Salt Man or what? Yeah, sure. So, so <laughs> all I was saying was Soul Man. Watching it now. It is so amazingly tame and so amazingly pro black people, pro anti, I mean, in, in a good way, anti white people. I'm not making the accusation, oh, it's, it's reverse racism, blah, blah, blah. It's it's in a good way, anti it, it's, it's a lesson people. learned. Yeah, it, it's it, but like a lesson learned where even at the end, like like when he's explaining to James Earl Jones, like, it was like, oh, you know, and he, I love the part where James Earl Jones goes, uh, you learn something I can't teach my students. I, I, and I, I don't know what accent that fucking was. Just ignore me. <laughs> this is Dude. A, I, you, no, don't, you ever, don't ever try to do a I, James I, Earl Jones. I, I started to try and gave up, but something still came out, and I got it back up. I, I apologize for that. But James Earl Jones tells him, you learn something that I can't teach my students uh, what it's like to be black. And then C. Thomas, I was like, no, sir. I don't know what it's like to be black. I could always go back. Right. <laughs> if I don't I, like it, you know, I can go and back. And I, like, I was like, holy shit. I, like, that's like uh, That's like... 20% of the argument I've heard from any civil, you know, like from uh, any Black Lives Matter uh, person about why white people suck. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like you, 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 you can't. And I actually, my favorite part of the whole film, uh, comedy wise, and there are some really funny lines in the film too. Uh, and, um, um, uh, er, 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 I don't know how to pronounce his name. Ari Gross? Aria Gross? Aria? Aria? Aria Gro? The guy that plays his, part, his uh, friend. Oh. Gordon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been in a ton of shit. I, I, sure. You know, uh, he was in... Uh, this director also directed the film House. House, yes. Which, oh, he was in House 2. Which he was in House 2. But right, that's one of the Steve Meyer yeah. had nothing to do with House 2. Other than maybe recommending this guy for the movie. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, 
So, I mean, there's a lot of funny stuff. One of the, my favorite scenes in the film was when he, that, that white chick is Is this trying an to, R-rated uh, movie, by the way? I never looked. Is it what? Is this an R-rated film, by the way? I never I, looked. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't, Only I can't because... Being, I, can't, I can't think be over me being interrupted midstream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's PG-13, but they got like three fucks in there. Uh-huh. Scantily clad women. No, but no nudity. But no nudity. Anyway, what I was saying was yes, you were saying. I'm sorry, I interrupt you. Not to say really. No. <laughs> just, just that it's, it's so much of a buildup now. It's not worth saying. But my favorite line was when the the uh, white girl is trying to sleep with him because she's like obsessed with sleeping with the black guy, and civil oh, yeah. rights and stuff. And she says, you know, about uh, knowing what, what the struggle you people went through. And he like yells at her, "You have no idea what my people have been through." Like, what am I saying? <laughs> It immediately reminded me of um, of uh, tro- Tropic Thunder. Oh, right. <laughs> what do you mean, you people? So, what do you mean, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> and, now, there's a film that also was controversial because of blackface, and then everybody shut the fuck up after they actually saw the film. Right. You know, because the, cause the funny thing was, I, that's what I love about Tropic Thunder before it came out, because the controversy came out that oh, he's, he's doing a black character. How come they get a black person for it? And then the movie comes out and the opening movie is about the controversy b- behind the character playing a black character. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was like, oh, yeah, we're stupid. Never mind. <laughs> well, it just it, people just want, <laughs> like to complain about shit. And that's really well, all just, it comes down to. It was just they, they called it so far in advance. And it was like, yeah, it's not even. We're not even. We're not even copying reality. Reality's just copying us now. And you know, we we have copyright. That's right. Uh, really, there's nigga. nothing. If you play this film now, there's nothing wrong with this film. This is true. I, really, I I, 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 if you like, when 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 uh, Spike Lee and Eddie Murphy came out against the film, what the fuck were they? You know, by, oh, by the way, you know. Just for the record, Spike Lee can suck my white taint. <laughs> Motherfucker uh-huh. you know, made a couple of films that, that were passable and then spends the rest of his career just complaining about anything else that comes out that he doesn't like. That's right. Fuck him. Uh, but there's nothing racist about Soul Man. Except possibly just the mere concept of blackface mm-hmm. taken totally out of context. That's the only part of this film that's offensive. Yeah. And, yeah. And it really, every, the rest of it is, it's so blatantly uh, positive in its message and so blatantly anti-racism and so blatantly trying to show how what pe- black people have to go through in white society. It is so blatantly on the side of black Americans that. Yeah. Where's you'd, the argument? You'd have, <laughs> you'd, you'd have to be fucking. Uh, you, you'd have to. You, there's no way you can make a logical argument against this. You just end up sounding like a, a, an idiot. I'm wondering, um, this has, I don't believe this has been formally released on uh, Blu-ray yet. I think it's only been, it, you can only get it on iTunes and YouTube and places like that. I think it was released on, I saw a, I, I want to say it was released cover. on DVD, yeah. I saw a DVD cover, maybe, of this released as a double feature with 18 again. Oh, okay, but I believe it was also released as a standalone. I'm just, I'm just saying what I saw. That's all. Okay. I mean, I'm, that's all I'm saying is like I saw that somewhere. You know, it's funny. I, I took out my notebook for this. It's like, oh, I'm gonna have notes for this. The only notes I had was no, my my little have lengthy. Rant. What? I didn't have many either. I, I had the, my one lengthy rant on the college tuition that took me 15 minutes, and then I had my my favorite quote. And then I, I mentioned the fact that the film has three 80s montages: basketball, studying. And taking a test. <laughs> well, you got to have the the '80s montage. Yeah, I like it when uh, because that scene is on now when he's introduced to Julia Louise Dreyfus and her whatever boyfriend who's going to Boston University and trying to transfer to Harvard, and he's just swaying side to side like Stevie Wonder. <laughs> really bad, yeah. Ow. Oh. oh. Right, that that may, that may be the one questionable moment of the film where even I was like, eh, why are you doing that? <laughs> I thought it was interesting, though, that it seems like besides outside of Seinfeld, right. uh, 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 Julia Ruiz Dreyfus apparently, uh, I think primarily p- plays rich twats in films. Well, she has experience because I believe she's part of the uh, the Dreyfus family, the, that, the yes. billionaire Dreyfus family. 
Uh-huh. So it came pretty natural. I, 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 she's my, she's one of my favorite parts of um, uh, Christmas, Christmas vacation. vacation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why is the carpet all wet, Margo? I don't know. Oh, no, I got that backwards. Holy shit. A little <laughs> dyslexia from Joey. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, and then, of course, then she played the totally uh, crooked lawyer in um, uh, Arrested Development. Yep. Yeah. No, she's never played a likable character. Uh, and I'm including Seinfeld in that, too. Not a likable character. Uh, so Soul Man and 18 again were released uh, as a DVD combo. Told you. Um, I'm not answering that. Uh, sorry. That's right. I, I, I don't know who's calling, but... I, uh, we're not taking live calls tonight. Um, yeah, but, but we're, we're not, it's just, we're just not doing that tonight. Uh, but soul man and 18 again, were released as a DVD combo. Uh, uh-huh. and, uh, it doesn't seem to have been released any other way. And that was in 2011. So, but it took that long to get a DVD release up until that point. I mean, laser disc and VHS was the only way you could see this movie. And point, DVD came out in 95, so it uh-huh. took 16 years it's for just it to come part out. part of their catalog, and they yeah. probably just rolled it out with a bunch of other stuff just to fill the gaps. That's all. Yeah. I get it, the film did well, and then after it did well, they, everybody's like, oh, all right, let, and, but there was controversy, so let's like just like pretend it never happened, and which is a shame because it's a funny movie. As far as 80s comedies go, it's one of the better ones. Oh yeah, definitely. You know what? The the scene at the dinner table is on and I want to say that the person on this little screen that the kid was watching was little Richard. But yeah. but he's Prince on the table? <laughs> I think it was I thought it was Prince on the, on the No, table. I'm pretty sure it's I'm really sure that it's little Richard on the screen, the little screen, but I think what Prince probably said, "No, you can't use my likeness." <laughs> I got my my motherfucking movie Purple Rain's coming out next year. You can't use my likeness. I'm almost positive it's Little Richard. <laughs> He's not listed in the credits, but I'm sure if we go to the credits, that they they always have to mention like uh, where they get that kind of stuff. Oh really? So if, yeah, so at the end credits, it probably right mentions if I go it somewhere. Back a little bit. There we go. I'll pause it on the screen for everyone. Yeah, that looks a lot like Little Richard to me. That is definitely... I'm, I have it paused on the screen. That is definitely not Prince. I, I, I have a Prince expert messaging me right now telling me that you are wrong. It is definitely Prince. It ain't Prince. It... it uh, you 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 are in a in for a world of hurt because the, the <laughs> prince this this prince expert is infallible infallible it def- infallible it is definitely prince oh my god infallible yep i have it on good authority sure so about that. so how that come so how come on the screen on the screen it looks like little richard but on the table it looks like present prince <laughs> it, which is weird because it's 30 years later Maybe, maybe, maybe because you just your eyes aren't working that well. No, nah, I don't think so. It it is purple. I'm told it's purple velvet prints on purple. the TV. There's no way that's fucking prints. That, 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 I'm, I'm the his, expert his, has his spoken. face is too fucking full. It the, the it is prints, dude. He prints has not. He he looks exactly the same from that era to to, to just before he died. Yeah, it's prints. I don't think it's Prince. I know you don't think it's Prince, but I have it on good authority. I really that don't think that's Prince. Anyway. Can you still hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay, just double checking. Okay. I'd like to know who this expert is after the show. The expert said, suck it, Joey. So What? <laughs> what? <laughs> How about... No. No. <laughs> I'm not going to suck it. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm double checking the end credits just in case they have any mention. Again, usually if they have any kind of likeness on the screen, they mention it in the credits. 
Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, long story short, it's a funny film. I uh, like. I enjoyed it. I, I thought I, I was oh going to challenge you a real shit fest, and and I just it turned out I was I really enjoyed the film. I don't have now. By a, the way, a lot um, bad to say about it. The one thing I do find in the film that's a little racist is they have Ray Dong Chong, who's like one of those black girls that that's uh, like has traditionally white features, so it's okay to be have her be sexy in a film. Well, she's half white, I mean, so that helps. that's what I'm saying. She's like one of those. She's like she's like a, a white a, she's like a black actress that white American could be comfortable with because she looks because she has like you know subdued right facial you know what I'm trying to say white America would Surprise, fuck right on Sean <laughs> exactly um, what I find so that's I found that a little racist that they picked her as the black representation well, she was uh, pretty uh, she was pretty uh, you know she was working a lot she's pretty hot at the time. Uh, as, uh, oh she, yeah, oh, there's you know, that with her father, you know, film. you know, being um, uh, Tommy Chong and all that. So yeah, I liked it when she hit that stage where every film she was in, she died. That was fun. <laughs> it was like a nice period there. If she was in a film, you knew she wasn't making it to the third act. Yeah, uh, this wasn't one of them, of course. Um, uh, but interestingly enough, C. Thomas Howell ended up marrying her. Oh really? Then divorcing her a year later. Oh well. Who saw that they were coming? married in 89, and then they got divorced in 90. And then he married somebody else later, and they've been uh, married ever since. So I guess they were dating up until their marriage because they made think, the film three years prior. Yeah, I think they I think they met during the film. That and makes, that was where they started seeing each other. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, was, wait a minute. No, uh, that's wrong. I was like, was what? she in Red Dawn, but her name is Ray Dawn, Dawn Chong? <laughs> The Red Dong Chong. Red Dong Chong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think she was in Red Dawn. No, she was not. I, I don't believe that she was. <laughs> Ray Dong Chong. I mean, and, the, and the film doesn't really pull much. I, I like when he gets arrested for uh, swerving. Yeah, I said, that scene was just on. <laughs> and then, it's not like you. What are you going to do? Arrest me? <laughs> it's like they detain him eighteen hours without any formal charges. Right. And then they <laughs> with the baseball games. How'd the game goes, buddy? <laughs> it's like, we lost to a bunch of niggers. It's like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, this isn't going to go well for you, is it? <laughs> it's just, well, I mean, it was really, the film's unflinching at really just portraying that America sucks, you know, white America sucks for black people. Right. I And and uh, if it's gotten any better, I'm, I'm sure it's probably a little better at Harvard, maybe. I don't know. But I, uh, I would imagine uh, they only care about the color of your money. If they made this film today, there would be complaints that it's too tame. Yeah, sure, definitely. I, I want to see the one where, like, where the cop shoots him, gets him out of the car. <laughs> well, I lost my license. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> wow. Wow. What? Like that's not that's unreasonable. Uh, it, you know what? Um, yeah, no, it's totally reasonable. Did you see the one in the news yesterday? The black guy got shot. It was uh, a, a, um, a, psych a psych psychological counselor, psychiatric counselor. No. He he's on the ground, on his back, hands raised. The cop shot him in the leg. <laughs> and he even asked the cop, "Why'd you shoot me?" And the cop said, "I don't know." <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> exactly. And I, I love the interview with the guy because he said. I wasn't scared because I don't have a gun. I'm not. I'm unarmed. It's not like he's going to shoot me. Then he shot me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he's next to this. Um, the, it was like an autistic guy or a mentally handicapped guy yeah. from the place where he works that had wandered into the street playing with his toy truck. So sitting. So he's on the ground on his back with his hands in the air. Next to them, there's a 23 year old man playing with a toy truck, yelling, "Shut up!" And the cop shot the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> this shouldn't be as, as comical he, he, as you're making it out to be. Uh, it, although, I mean, the, the best part of the whole thing is even if even if the cop mistook the toy truck for a weapon, he wasn't holding it. <laughs> he shot the wrong guy. So, yeah. I, uh, I, Police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it back because I'm brown. C. Thomas Howell should have been shot this film in order. They would have to change. If they remade this today, it would be so fucking brutal. It'd be scary. Yeah. This film is so tame to be it, controversial. It is pretty tame. It, 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 
hindsight is always twenty twenty, and I, it just looking back at this film now, I would imagine anyone that did see it back then and then watched it now would just, what the fuck was I thinking? Well, I, you know I don't what? think it, anybody it, that was against the film back then actually saw it. Yeah. Honestly. Oh, there's the scene where he gets in the elevator and looks at a white old lady, and she takes her purse off her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> or how about when he walks in on his parents and the first thing the father does is get back honey <laughs> I'll take care of this <laughs> <laughs> I, like when, I like when he leaves like, I think he had a knife <laughs> <laughs> and again yeah alright con- all right, if you want suspension of disbelief somebody comes in that looks just like their son in his clothing but it's black and they don't recognize him I, I get it yeah alright it's not realistic it's, it's humor to illustrate a point about oh exactly upper class white America yeah so you, you can't yeah sure they're not encountering them. black people unless uh, they're just not encountering them oh sure the three stooges are funny but anybody taking a blow to the head with a hammer like that would have died instantly they like, come on let's be a little more realistic shut the fuck up <laughs> exactly seriously um so do we want to rate Soul Man let's go ahead and rate it. On IMDb, it is at 5.1 with 6,000 votes. I think that's a little low. I agree. Amazingly low. Yeah, I think that's a little low. How, how high would you want to go with this? <sighs> Nothing higher than a 7. I agree. Um, I could I, 6 for sure, but I'm trying to talk myself into a 7 somehow. You know what I want to talk into a 7 for? That there's no real... I mean, even though there's sexual um, content... I, I love the part where he's talking about, well, you know, um, after she sleeps with him. Oh, well, right. some stereotypes aren't true, like penis size. He's like, oh. He's like, what? <laughs> I what? mean, you see it coming a And you can see in his away, face, he's like, fun. I thought I had that going for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, um, if she slept, in him, uh, slept with him and he was white, she probably would have been more than happy. <laughs> for it, I, I honestly, I, 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 I would say plus a star for any teen comedy in the 80s that does not have graphic sexual content. Seriously. Yeah. How, it's, how, it's many, only, how many It's only PG-13 because of all the fucks that they had. Right. I mean, this is actually, this is like a PG comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, on a very touchy, controversial subject, I thought handled very well. Uh, I Agreed. I think just for that alone, it deserves a 7. Let's do it then. Yeah. A very underrated comedy that really should have more uh, attention than now, than it does. Uh, and then demographics. You're gonna love demographics, the demographics aren't split by black and white, unfortunately, so we can't get those, um, <laughs> those numbers here. Uh, but um, oh, this is kind of interesting. What's there that? were only two female, uh, only two males under the age of 18 that rated it, and it's uh, 7.5 average for them. Wow. And only three females under 18 who saw it, and they gave it 7.3. So there you go. America's youth now, this age's youth, get the film. They get it. Any IMDb staff? Uh, IMDb staff? No. No. Yeah, yeah one, one. One, and he gave us six. Uh, it's very safe. That's safe. It is a safe one. We see, we're not safe, are we? No. 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 Uh, and then the lower demographics, pretty much anybody thirty or older or, or over, gave it like a five, a- on average. Yeah, because they probably saw that. I saw that when I was a kid. I hated it. Or yeah, I remember. And when I, I haven't watched. I haven't watched it since. I, 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 yeah, so the younger people actually like this film more, um, which is surprising because you would think they would think it was too tame considering all the crazy stuff coming out now. Uh, you know, those kids today. Those kids today. Those hipsters. Fucking hipsters. <laughs> do it later. What'd you do? No, nothing. I'll do it later. All right. All right, so are we good? I think so. I think we're good. I think we yeah, go, I think just, we go ahead go and end, the... end this bitch. Yeah, we can end this so I can go read the leaked text of uh, of uh, Trump's acceptance speech. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and end the show. About time. Let's yeah, it's about time. <clears throat> <sighs> I've been watching anyway. a lot of movies lately, so I'm just trying to catch up on that kind of stuff. I haven't. Uh, I, I get my I, films I lately it. from no. yeah. I, I get that. Uh, I get my films from doing the, sh- the podcast actually. Um, and then I throw a couple of films in there whenever I can. Anyway, thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Movie Sucktastic, episode 215. <laughs> We've been doing this shit for a long fucking time. 
Fuck Please, yeah! Fuck yeah! Please go to our website at moviesucktastic.com and go ahead and download any of our shows. Listen to them right from the website or watch it live every Thursday at 8 o'clock as hopefully you're doing right now. You can go to iTunes and you can download the show or listen to the show right from there as well. If you want to leave us voicemail, which I renewed for another year, so let's get some fucking voicemail. Come on. Uh, that The number for that is 908-514-4470. If you want to email us, the address is themovieguys at moviesucktastic.com. If you want to go to our Tumblr page, it's moviesucktastic.tumblr.com. If you want to go to our Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash moviesucktastic. If you want to download the free app that we have for your Android phone or tablet, you can. Everything that I just mentioned is in it. You can listen to the show from it. You can see movie posters, all kinds of fun stuff. Our Twitter feed, it's all there. It's 100% free. Get it. And if you want to do a general search for us in your favorite search engine, Scott likes Google. Google it. <laughs> just do a search for Movie Sucktastic, and we're all over the fucking place. So, now that we've done, do you have any words of wisdom, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no, because you know what the first three things that popped in my head is like, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. So Bitch, think, go I get my heroin and, and hypodermic needle. <laughs> there, there's your words of wisdom. I was going to say, nigga, please. But I like, no, no, definitely not a line. Don't really, go. nigga? <laughs> Exactly. I'm the craziest nigga you ever gonna see. Yeah, I'm the craziest nigga you ever gonna see. <laughs> oh yeah. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> we we eating dinner here. We eating dinner here, motherfucker. All right, everybody. We will talk to you next week. Oh yeah. Bye bye. 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 Definitely the most racist episode. It had to be. Drinks are free. They, they free. They free. They free.